Hello everyone, this is The Last Word and I'm Maria Shakil. An intense war of words has erupted between the Maharashtra Congress and the BJP after the BJP came out all guns blazing against the Congress of distributing blank copies of the Constitution at an event led by Rahul Gandhi in Nagpur. The leader of opposition in the Lok Sabha addressed Sambidhan Samman Sammelan in Nagpur on Wednesday, saying he assured that the Congress will not let the Constitution be harmed at any cost. He also carried a slim copy of the Constitution with a red cover, which became Talk of the Town. Today, Parliamentary Affairs Minister Kiran Rijuju slammed his rivals for fake drama, claiming the book Rahul Gandhi waved at the Sammelan in Nagpur was actually a blank notebook with a binding designed to make it look like the copy of the Constitution in question. The BJP's Maharashtra unit then jumped in and shared a video of what it said were notebooks bound in red distributed at Rahul Gandhi's event. In the video, the book was opened to show blank pages. Then Congress leader Vijay Vadetiwar came out in defense of Rahul, saying the notebook and pen had been given to all attendees. The squabble over the constitution echoes one of the Congress's big weapons for the April-June election. That was the Lok Sabha polls, if you remember. Voters must unite behind the party-led India bloc to stop the BJP from amending or challenging the constitution and vote for the opposition to save democracy. The BJP certainly realizing that at that time they had not countered that narrative strong enough. The BJP's attack over the Red Book issue this week contains a sharp jab on that topic and certainly the party has gone all out to say now that support to Congress is actually means killing constitution. So let's do debate tonight that on the last word. But first up, let's listen in to the political reactions. Samvidhan ko haath me pakar karke natak karne ka kaam jo Congress party ne kiya hai. Samvidhan ko haath me pakarne se kuch nahi hota hai. Samvidhan ka andar me jo spirit hai, uska samajna hoga. Isle Nagpur me नीला रंग के छोड़ करके लाल रंग में संविधान का कवर पिक्चर डाल करके राहुल गांधी ने नकली संविधान बांटने का काम किया कवर लगाया कवर के नीचे में कुछ नहीं था मुझे बताया गया है संविधान के बारे में एबीसी नहीं मालूम है राहुल गांधी को आज कैसे किस मुंह से वो बाबा साहब भीमराव अंबेडकर का नाम ले सकते हैं अगर बीजेपी नौटकी बताती है तो मुझे लगता है बीजेपी राहुल गांधी से डरती है कोई भी नेता कार्यक्रम करता है तो उसको नोटंकी कहना क्या हम मोदी का कार्यक्रम हो तो नोटंकी कहेंगे नहीं कहेंगे वो अधिकार है जिनको उनको जहां बुलाए वहां जाने का नेता है देश के एक पार्टी के प्रमुख नेता है और उन, उसी कार्यक्रम को अर्बन नक्सलाइट करना मैं बोलता हूं कि सामाजिक संगठनों का अपमान है ओबीसी आदिवासी दलित इस विविध संगठना ने इस कार्यक्रम का आयोजन किया है तो उनको अगर नक्सलाइट कहते हो तो आप होम मिनिस्टर करके आपकी जिम्मेदारी है वहां कौन नक्ष, अर्बन नक्सलाइट है उसको चेक, चेक करना पहचानना आप चेक करो इंक्वायरी करो और ऐसे बेतों की बातें करने से पहले आपको कार्रवाई करने का पूरा अधिकार है ज्वाइनिंग मी नाउ नीजा चौधरी सीनियर जर्नलिस्ट मैथ्यू एंटनी ऑफ द कांग्रेस डॉक्टर सूरज यंगरे इज ऑथर ऑफ कास्ट मैटर्स एंड तुम सिन्हा नेशनल स्पोक्स पर्सन ऑफ द बीजेपी नीरजा इट्स अ फेमिलियर पिच समथिंग दैट वी सो actually caused the BJP a number of seats in the Lok Sabha polls. The BJP, that's the reason why, uh, is looking at reasons to counter this constitution khatre mein hai logic. The question is, did the Congress go overboard in just flashing that book, which was not really the constitution or a copy of the constitution, it was an empty book or a notebook which was red in color? Yes, well, you know, it, it depends on how it is going to be taken by people. Yes, ideally, yes, it should have been the constitution. Rahul Gandhi has been talking about the constitution. In, the, in parliament also, he flagged it, and that is the real constitution. A copy of it is very easily available. And uh, red, of course, because the cover was red and it had blank pages, obviously the BJP is going to going for the connotations of that red as well as the blank which it is doing. 
that actually the Congress is not very serious. It's all dramatics and uh, and optics. And but you know they are worried about it because of the impact this issue had during the Lok Sabha That's election. Right. It did have traction. Now much will depend on how this is viewed uh, by ordinary people. Does it have resonance? And also the importance of the Maharashtra elections for both the BJP as well as the Congress uh, and what are the issues that are getting flagged. And I think uh, it's going to be interesting to see how it picks up in the coming hours and days. Okay. Uh, but Dr. Suraj, my question is that distributing a blank copy or a notebook with red cover, does it really insult the spirit of the Constitution? Thank you, Mariam. I actually, uh, you know, what Nirja was saying, I'll just piggyback on that part. Uh, you know, it almost occurs that it's, it's, it's more of an event management than the spirit of Constitution and the politics that surrounds it that had to be uh, put in focus. I think that's what the uh, visuals are showing that is on the screen. But also, you know, you have to understand that the politics of constitution is primarily, at least in Maharashtra elections, was about Panchit Bahujan Agadi, the party led by Prakash Ambedkar, Dr. Ambedkar's grandson. And, you know, their focus was about this whole constitution because the constituency that they represent wholesomely relies on the values and as well as the spirit of constitution that give them certain rights and, dig and, and, and dignity. Now, when the BJP goes for a kill for this kind of mishap and calling it urban nexal, I mean, you know, uh, to to paraphrase Malcolm X, the, the chickens are coming home to roost. It was the the Congress cabal, the the uh, uh, the UPA one and UPA two, especially uh, Chidambaram, who kind of made this whole Naxal project a project of their own selling. And now, with this new kind of found love that the Congress is seeing itself, certainly the BJP will have much more vacancy uh, to look for where Congress had been much more vacant when it comes to advocating a policy. Now, the red book, red cover, empty constitution, that, these are all empty rhetorics. Neither BJP nor Congress have enough in their balances uh, to comment and talk about it, especially if it's the issue of constitution and if it's somewhere down somewhere, and there's nobody prohibiting BJP to do the same. Why to go uh, and critique and, and make a fool of yourself when uh, the vacancy of various intellectual a progress lies not in the um, in, in, in the terrain of BJP or Congress, but with the people, and in this case, the politics of the Bojans that Kanchi Ram and now uh, many others are leading. Okay, so let me bring in the two politicians now. Matthew, Anthony, it's, a, it's an event gone wrong? Maria, I carry the same constitution book, and it is not published by the Congress people, it is published by a publishing house. Now, you say that, you know, you made a statement that Rahul Gandhi published, or uh, Rahul Gandhi put a constitution which was blank. I'm opening this constitution book in front of you. you know, it has no, got no, the constitution I mean, book. those are the visuals so, which have come out. In no, which but you know, you don't, you don't have the notebooks. visuals of Rahul Gandhi no, no, no. holding one moment, a blank constitution. One moment, one moment, yeah. Matthew Anthony. In fact, your yeah. own party leader has said that what was distributed was a notebook with uh, a pen. On the notebook, I agree, Maria. But yes. you know, the so book let's which, talk about held, that. Which, was, which was held by Rahul Gandhi was not yes. an empty constitution. It was a constitution book, you know, which I'm also carrying the same yes. thing and I'm showing it across to you. Now, coming to the next of the points, why the BJP is acting tough on this is because, you know, who is kind of speaking about the constitution? In the last 10 years of the rule of BJP in various parts of the country, as well as in India, also, you see countless butchering of democracy by buying, selling, using CB, CBI, ED, everything, you know, to kind of, you know, change democracy to their attire, to their, to their comfort. You have seen countless murders in the name of religion. You have seen countless rapes under the, under the hatred. You know, now, in Maharashtra, you have seen 64,000 girls missing every year, 8,000 farmers dying. Where is the love for constitution in all, all these things? Where is the love of constitution for BJP? Now, they are citing about an empty book, you know, which is being said. But, you know, where is BJP practicing or walking the talk of protecting or respecting the constitution? But whereas, you look at the Congress part of it, we have been asking for empowering the people from the farmers, from the women, from the children, to everyone. We have been fighting for the caste censuses because we want to have the equality and the empowerment coming into the people who have not been kind of, you know, gone through a census and, you know, who have not been identified by the system. Where is BJP doing anything for this one rather than coming back and making some news making for the sake of the news? 
rather than doing something concretely for this one. So my questions are to the BJP and my questions are to the questions which is coming to us. Whereas we are walking the talk to protect this constitution by all means, day in and day, day and night all together. What is the BJP doing rather than making some okay. noises about so some let, let that small question be answered by Atuheen Sinha. Well, good evening. Uh, good evening to you. Um, you know, blank minds distribute blank copies of the Constitution, and that only shows that their commitment to the Constitution is zero. Now, the first point is, how does Rahul Gandhi have the mandate to talk about Constitution when, you know, over 90 times they have violated Article 356 and dismissed elected governments? Has he apologized for that? You know, they have imposed emergency. They have they have injected words like socialism and secularism while, you know, the country was reeling under emergency. And even today, Rahul Gandhi continues to violate the spirit of the Constitution by spreading canards around the Constitution, by traveling abroad and saying that uh, India's democracy is in danger, by, by deliberately denigrating institutions like the Election Commission without any evidence. So somebody who habitually denigrates India's institutions, who ha habitually tampers with the spirit of the Constitution, has no business talking about the Constitution. Even today, you know, the Congress representative on your show might be proudly flaunting the Constitution. But if, if I ask him how many articles are there in the Constitution, he may struggle. And Rahul Gandhi, of course, will have no answer to that. So is it about the letter and spirit? I mean, who is really following the principles of constitution in letter and spirit that's the larger question no, ask, here, ask, ask him how many articles are there in the constitution no i mean uh, that's really not uh, it's not, uh, not some kind here. of uh, well, well, or general uh, knowledge which that, is going to happen here so to answer my question I is mean, that well, that it's about following the constitution in letter and spirit is the bjp doing that you know the way the way the highest turnout elections recently concluded in kashmir jammu and kashmir a place where until 37 years ago in 1987 we saw how national conference and congress party would rig elections that that reinstates our commitment to democracy they don't understand the meaning of democracy it's very easy to say democracy is in danger by spreading all kinds of canards. And over here on your show, they are checking out the constitution when I asked a certain pointed question to them. Okay. Matthew, Anthony. Maria, it will be childish to answer to him on such kind of questions here. Now, let us ask, you know, let's uh, go Why is it childish? History. Because you distribute blank constitutions. Tuhin, I, 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 I didn't interrupt you while you were talking. Yes. So allow me to talk. Let's have some respect for each other when we... Yes, listen. please. Go ahead. Yeah. Hmm. So... Who in India doesn't know that who was opposing the constitution from coming into existence? Was it the BJP? Was it the Jan Sang? Was it India? Was it, you know, who was, who, was, who was resisting the existence of the constitution or the constitution being instituted? Now, who is trying to change the constitution? You are saying that, you know, secularism and socialism was amended into the constitution. Who is trying to amend the constitution with some other words or some other, some other political ideology? Who is doing that one? And in the name of the constitution, we are walking the talk. We are trying to empower the people. I have demonstrated, you know, which always we are empowering the people. You are only empowering the rich, which is what, you know, we are saying. You are kind of stripping the fundamental rights and the powers of the people, which is vested with them in the constitution. You are stripping it to large monopolists. And we are fighting for the equal opportunities for every individual, as given by the fundamental rights of it. Do you have an answer for it? You are making the business monopoly for Adani, Ambani, and all sort of people. You are depriving the, no. uh, uh, the opportunity for smaller MSME enterprises. Okay. Can you come out with a number of MSMEs which are kind of uh, which are abandoned? Maria, are kind of shut shop yes, in yes, all these we days? respond and then I bring in the analyst. Please, no, no, Maria, this is you know you you. Have, I mean, let the viewers decide who is childish. Does Adani getting business in Congress state that is not childish? You know, the kind no, of we are against the no, 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 issue and hand here. Yeah. The question here yeah. is, no, 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 one moment, please, please one moment. One Adani. moment, Adani. Matthew, Adani. one moment. The, the question is, that I'm asking keep... is that who is following the constitution in letter and spirit? So, point you know, for all the, you know, deviations that both of you may be doing, let let me go back to the, to analysts now. Nija Chaudhary and Dr. Suraj on the screen, please. Dr. Suraj, you know, the question is, that politicians, of course, will be trying to score political brownie points. And that is the reason why we saw Devendra Fadnavis, uh, senior union ministers, all of them 
question Rahul Gandhi and say that he really doesn't understand the quest, uh, constitution. The question is that this issue actually had BJP on a back foot, particularly uh, during the Lok Sabha polls. That is correct. I mean, I'm, I'm still unable to understand why have a qualm over a national leader organizing a conference. I mean, there's nothing that should bother. And it's, it's not about, you know, organizing a conference, uh, let's say, against democracy or something like that. It's, it's about, you know, at least the title says, uh, Samvidhan Sammelan, there's a conference on constitution, people coming. In fact, if the BJP and opposition was mature enough, they would have, as I said, mimicked or even at least affronted an event of such nature. Now, you know, looking at the constitution and the way it has been portrayed as something, I mean, it's a precipice. It's, 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 it's the towering kind of, uh, epitome that we look at, and it's, it's complex, that when people um, kind of look at these challenges. And so now they have no other issue. So the, the command that this is a red book, urban Naxal, and all kinds of, you know, this is cliche. And, and the, the, the way they advertise it to really make fool of people and, 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 and the people who are going to vote them, uh, to really circle them around the idea of constitution. And, and let me tell you, you know, both Congress and BJP have had their hands with blood when it mm. comes to people who have been claiming uh, dignity and human rights. And they have, happened, they have happened across the government. So both don't have any moral stand to talk and, and from the pulpit that they, that they tend to debate. And it really sounds funny to me that one is accusing the other, other is accusing the other. And this kind of story of this bi-party kind of a comradeship continues, whereas the mute voter just this looks for options. And that's what, as I said, Let's not confine the constitution to BJP and Congress. In Maharashtra, there has been much more alternatives like Vanchit Bhavajan Agari. There's also uh, what OVC has been doing with his party and the many other options through the Maratha and OVC reservation kind of moves. That itself is a constitutional project and mandate. Now, Rahul Gandhi has taken upon that because there is a certain reckoning to him. And so when we have to analyze Congress in current times, maybe we have to look at it not as a Congress of Indira, or Congress of Rajiv, or let alone the Bombay plan of, of, of Congress of Nehru, but Congress of Rahul, which is the contemporary Congress, which really centers around social justice model. And I think that model is something that we need to really consider when we comment on it. And I think it will really be a foolish to say something of an event, as I, as I recommend to our BJP friends, they could do similar events with much more bombastic, because they have the state at their own disposal. Okay, so it's, it should not be seen as an event, but more of a social justice pitch. So, Neelja Chaudhary, you know, we know what the larger messaging from both the sides is. Would you say that debating constitution is far better than, than getting into the rhetoric of election where we see new laws every now and then? So, it's better if the two sides are talking about the spirit of constitution. Look, Maria, as far as you and I are concerned and the citizen out there is concerned, the Constitution of India is the most prized document. Absolutely. Everybody takes oath on it. The Prime Minister, you know, somebody, some some panelists said, what right does, has, uh, does uh, Rahul Gandhi have to talk about the Constitution? If, as LOP, he's not going to talk about adhering to the Constitution, what else will he do? If the Prime Minister doesn't talk about adhering to the Constitution, what more can, you know, what, what can we expect then from the Prime Minister? We expect them to make sure that we adhere to what is in the Constitution of India. Of course, over the decades, a lot of changes and amendments have been made. And now, uh, because the Constitution did work as an issue in the Lok Sabha election, Rahul Gandhi and his Congress party are continuing with that theme, obviously. And the message was not constitution per se, as a document, as a book. I don't know how much resonance it had. But what did have resonance with the Dalit was that the constitution may be amended and that amendment may lead to their reservation being taken away. That became a very hot issue. Now, does the Congress party, is the Congress party able to convert the constitution again into a an issue that becomes an electoral centerpiece of their campaigning. That is what remains to be seen. But as far as, you know, you go back to 45 years ago, 
Uh, that Indira Gandhi dismissed governments of the opposition in 1980. Of course, she did. Janata Party, of which the BJP, at that time the Jansang, its earlier avatar, was a, a part. In 1977, they dismissed nine, nine state governments, and Indira Gandhi retaliated in kind. So let's not go back to 45, 50 years ago. We're looking at today. Otherwise, there's no end to it. You know, you will do nothing new. So I mm. think the central question is: Will the Congress Party be able to make the constitution again as an emotive issue, as they succeeded in doing in in the Lok Sabha election? Okay. Mr. Matthew, will you respond to that? And then I'll uh, ask you to... I will, Maria. I completely agree that constitution is a living document. And, you know, we completely abide by that one. And if you look at the poll promises which we have made, which is in alignment with the principles laid out by the constitution, and we are leaving that one. So we are saying that the constitution is under threat under the BJP rule, and we will uphold, respect, and practice the constitution in spirit and in principle and in practice. That's exactly what we are saying in our election campaign in the state of Maharashtra and the promises and the commitments which we are making also is in accordance to that one. So we are in no doubt about you know, what we are saying and we are absolutely confident and sure about what we are saying about respecting and practicing and walking about the constitution. So uh, That's what I'm saying. Okay, and uh, one we... last word to Mary uh, and one last word to Tuhin. It is 448 uh, articles with 100 amendments as of now. Okay, so you be comfortable okay, with that. Okay, so Tuhi, the question is if the leader of opposition will not speak about the constitution, then who will? Maria, my point is very simple. Since Nirja ji insists that I stay in the present, I'm staying in the present. The party which compulsively denigrates institutions without evidence, without basis, is the one which is tampering the spirit of the constitution. I mean, they make absurd charges against the election commissions. They make absurd charges against the judicial system. When the election commission countered them with logic, with facts on the right. Haryana election, did they apologize? Then who is, who is, you know, tampering with the spirit of the constitution? Obviously, it is the Congress party which is spreading all kinds of misconceptions about institutions not functioning in this country. Okay, Matthew, you wanted to speak. Please come in. Yes, I would like to disagree with the statement, but because we have disagreed with the Election Commission, we also stay firm to our allegations that the entire institutions of this country, starting from the judiciary, starting from the CBI, ED, everything, and the educational institutions to a large extent, are completely being degraded or infiltrated with a political ideology. We don't have a problem with respect to any of the institutions, but, you know, uh, Getting into the institution and uh, filling in with a political ideology, taking out the neutral stand, is completely disallowed in a democracy, which is against the spirit of the constitution, which is what we are opposing to. Okay. But the larger question then is that let there be discussion on constitution, who is following the constitution in letter and spirit or not. That's what uh, Dr. Suraj uh, tends to agree with, uh, uh, with me, and I agree with him on that point, that if it's about adhikar and uh, samman of uh, samvidhan, then both the sides can organize events and uh, talk about constitution. Dr. Suraj. That's correct, Maria. And, and I think what we really, you know, this, this really is a, you know, um, waste of energies and important time so that, you know, we are even debating about this because there's no, uh, there's no denying from, I guess, all the sides. And there's a debate that too about a leader saying something, and, and Mr. Rijiju, who did a good conference on Buddhism, but, you know, just, just lacks political acumen to comment on topics like that. It, it, it was really a lost cause. Like, why do you waste such an important time and resource and instead focus on policy mandates? And this is what really tells us about the opposition's absence to really counter on certain policy measures. If a leader is talking about something, you know, they could come back with their own set of new manifestos, agendas, and really just say, okay, you know, he did that, and that's fine. We have our program, which is stated as XYZ manifesto, talks about those things. We need to do something for Maharashtra. What they did with Lok Sabha elections, what they, gonna, what they did with this uh, Vidhan Sabha elections they're going to do. And this saga of centering constitution has surpassed the Dalit uh, base. A Dalit is a core base, as we know, they also... Uh, uh, constitute an important uh, uh, voting block, yes. uh, which can really influence uh, on which side uh, the candidates come in. But that has also gotten the OBCs, especially in Maharashtra, rallied up because they also see 
reservation as becoming one of their agendas, and the Marathas are also positioning of them. Okay. So the correlation to the constitution goes what Nirja pointed out through okay, reservation. So, yeah, so a little more on that aspect, Nirja. You know, the fact is that it played out the way it did, perhaps in Maharashtra, uh, because the, Dalits, the Dalit constituency reacted to that fear that was generated on uh, some changes to reservation, which was you know, written in the constitution. Do you think uh, lots has changed from June, you know, April to June to now, and uh, the Mahayuti in some ways has managed to convince the, this crucial constituency of their sincerity. And it will be a completely different story now. I think this remains to be seen, but yes, the kind of anger and angst that the Dalits uh, had in the Lok Sabha elections, when you, you found young men and Dalit Tolas deep into the villages, whether it is of Maharashtra or Uttar Pradesh, discussing this, you know, that the reservation may go. That kind of thing is not happening. Will the Dalit go back as it as Dalit did in Haryana, as a part of the Jat versus non-Jat consolidation that took place? Are the OBC versus Maratha in Maharashtra that's getting played out? That polarization has taken place. I'm sitting in Aurangabad in the heart of Marathwada. And this, this is a reality. So, yes, uh, constitution has got linked, as somebody said, to is correlated to reservations, whether it's of Dalits or OBC and, <clears throat> or Marathas. And uh, how this is going to play out in Maharashtra also remains to be seen. But it's, it's, a, it's a battle that's become too close to call at the moment uh, All right. in the state. Yes, very, very <coughs> complex election and uh, no mathematics or chemistry seems minute. to be I need a, I need a few following seconds. the traditional pattern here. So thank you so much, Matthew Anthony, Dr. Suraj, Tuin Sina and Nirja Chaudhary for joining us. Uh, that's all from me on this edition of The Last Word.